All right, you've asked for the follow-up. We're looking at more Hacksmith industry. 4,000 degree proto lightsaber test. This cuts through anything. Well, let's see. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see this baby in action. Hey guys, I'm the Hacksmith, and on the last episode of Make It Real, we made the world's first retractable plasma-based lightsaber. That looks like a lightsaber. And at temperatures of over 4,000 Fahrenheit, it's almost as hot as one too. But the real question is, does it work like a lightsaber? How hot is a lightsaber from Star Wars? Well, it can vaporize metal pretty quickly and even go through heavy blast doors. So probably on the order of tens of thousands of degrees Celsius, but that's assuming they use materials that are similar to ours in Star Wars. It could even be higher than that. It could be lower than that. Just depends on whatever exotic materials they use to make their equipment out of. Obviously, a lightsaber needs to be good at stabbing stormtroopers. <laughs> it catches them on fire. That is so cool. Then again, that, that also raises the question, what are the Stormtroopers' armor made out of? I'm not sure, but this is, this is having more of a fire effect. I don't know if that's just because of this little armor right here, but yeah. <laughs> now, besides so ruthlessly cool. murdering Stormtroopers, a lightsaber should also be able to cut through walls. Now, I know they're putting in the background music, but the, as far as the sound, is that actually what it sounds like when it's cutting through, or are they adding in lightsaber sound effects from the movies? Was that like poster board or something? Yeah, here there's definitely a lot more um, convection at work than what you see in the movies, which is really cool because it's not just heating up the area that it's cutting through. It's causing, you can see it's melting, deforming the, the material that's a bit further away from it. You'd see more of that if the lightsabers in Star Wars, which are supposedly much hotter than even this, and this is still very, very hot, that it would have more of that sort of effect. But... Then again, in the actual movies, you see Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting this close to lava. So <laughs> lightsabers by themselves aren't the only significant source of heat that gets ignored in the movie. So cool to see these in real life, though. Each. All right, so that wasn't really a real wall. What about metal side? There you go. Yeah, I mean, poster board. It's interesting to note that there's a lot more sparks that kind of happen, at least compared to the movies. It's a lot more clean of a cut there. It's, uh, I actually think reality looks cooler. <laughs> Look at that. Basically a plasma cutter. Yeah. How about a steel door? There's the heavy blast door that... You can cut through that.
The only reason yeah. we're doing that is because these tests take a while. The backpack does work by itself, but these small tanks only last for about five minutes. So when we're filming a big test video like this, it's important to have a lot of extra gas, which is why we're going with the corded route at the moment. Makes sense. Yeah, because that took a, look, a bit longer. And yeah, it, this wouldn't be practical in combat, obviously, but it's... It's still just so cool that to make something like this a thing based off of existing technology. A lightsaber's got to be able to cut through a blaster. Well, let's see if we can do that. You have a blaster? Oh, like the actual gun. I was talking about like stopping blaster bolts. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna go ahead and invent a plasma gun to see if our device can stop that. <laughs> that would be so funny. We know lightsabers can cut off limbs. What would our limbs. lightsaber do to flesh? Let's find out. Okay, sure. Yeah, get, get some meat. Looks like it's just gonna cook it. It's gonna be a lot slower and more painful. <laughs> yeah, it cooks it. <laughs> Time for the no. ultimate test. Lightsaber versus lightsaber. Really? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> My lights. The light's still on. <laughs> the lights. The light's still on. The lightsaber. No. <laughs> We're actually going to be giving away this Mace Windu lightsaber cut with the world's first real-life plasma <laughs> lightsaber, awesome. along with a whole bunch of Haxma swag, thanks to our sponsor, Honey. I don't know about you guys, but these days, I do literally all my shopping online. Which I can't let Bogdan have all the fun. Captain I think it's my America turn to test out this lightsaber. What? Now, a few years ago, the internet was abuzz with the question, what would happen if you took a lightsaber to Captain America's shield? Hmm. Well, I think we are some of the only people in the world I don't world know a whole lot about Captain America's shield. Out. Let's see. It's probably made out of some magical material or something. Wow. You gonna need another oxygen tank or two? As you can see, it melts vibranium like butter. Vibranium. Sounds dirty. Let's try some everyday objects. I wonder what happens if I hit a window. That is freaking cool. The glass is fun, yeah. Woo! It just doesn't have the structural oh! stability for that heat. Woo! Oh, it's melting! And exploding! Woo! You can literally see, it's molten. It's molten! It's dripping out the other side. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. <laughs> Alright, window panes was one thing. But what about tempered glass? Mm. I'm kind of expecting this to shatter as well, but maybe it'll melt. Oh, it's kind of scary. Ah! Put it in sand and see if you make it in the glass. Holy <laughs> moly. Oh! <laughs> that was awesome. All right, so we've tried glass, but what if we turn sand there you, into glass? There you go. Exactly what I was thinking. Wow. Oh, it's working already. I was blowing the sand in the air. When the first atomic bombs were tested, it turned the sand in the uh, white sands range into glass after the Trinity test. Crazy. But a bunch of it's melting. There's a glob. Combine. Woo! Look at that. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to my good friend Ivan from Zombie Go Boom. He generously donated his body for science. Wow. Go set him on fire. Oh boy. Uh oh. Anything fleshy, there's certainly a lot more fire than you see in the movies, which in the movies depicts it as like a clean cut that the wounds are cauterized. It's like, nah, there'd be a lot more people or whatever alien creature you're fighting being set being set on fire, and also keeping into account that there's that much heat. And it could even, with active 
Um, could even cause some bits of explosions because 4,000 degrees is hot enough that if it made contact with liquid water, that you could even have just it flash in such a violent way that the water effectively explodes. This came up during the Chernobyl cleanup, actually, and that was one of the reasons why you couldn't use water to extinguish that fire. And you would use things like sand, um, sand laced with boron, uh, boron for slowing down the nuclear reaction, um, even though it was, the reaction was already over because the core tore itself to pieces, but it's about getting additional shutdown margin and even, uh, even chunks of lead. But yeah, water, weird things happen to water when temperature is suddenly increased to ridiculous levels. I mean, water is hot in a nuclear reactor, but it's at a pressurized nuclear reactor. It's on the order of 300, 400 uh, Celsius in a pressurized water reactor. But 4,000, that's when weird stuff starts to happen. Uh-oh. Oh, it's so hot. Let's see what happens to concrete. Con Concrete's got water in it. Whoa. Oh, ow, that's burning. Yeah, little, little pop. Look at that, look, it's still glowing. Now, I don't really want to stand here forever melting this hole, but I think it would work. You'd use a lot of oxygen, <laughs> a lot, lot, lot of fuel for that thing. But, so I guess you could eventually get through the outer layer of a reactor containment, but it would just take a ridiculous amount of time and a lot of lightsabers and a lot of fuel, because it's mainly heavily reinforced concrete it's uh it's several feet thick though so i think we're uh the security force would have significant amount of time to stop someone doing this sort of thing to it <laughs> next off with their head <laughs> yeah decapitations would be a lot more fire all right time for the ultimate test i'm gonna try cutting through a quarter inch steel plate to represent a blast shield door, just like Qui-Gon Jinn. That's a lot thicker than a quarter inch, but okay. <laughs> it's probably also made out of something more exotic Ooh. than steel. It's like making little rainbows as the heat spreads. We are through! They're not gonna put quarter in the where or the droid is closed. That's still really cool though. I can't believe we went through a blast shield door, quarter inch steel plate. That's crazy! There are actually some blast shields um, or blast doors. They're mainly in like military um, nuclear in installations, like a nuclear missile silo or something. But there are you will see some like heavy doors used like be between the entrance to the uh, control room. There's heavy airlock doors when going into the reactor containment building because the containment building is designed to withstand a pressure. You would have an airlock, kind of similar to you would have on a spacecraft. Except here you're having pressure that would that could potentially be higher than atmospheric in the event of an accident for the containment building as opposed to pressure that is zero when you're in space. So it's kinda it kinda works the opposite way. Gonna cut through a grill. Now, based on the size of your turkey, you're gonna want to cook it at four thousand degrees for five seconds per pound of turkey. Thanksgiving special. Oh yeah. Perfect. Now, since it is Thanksgiving here in Canada, Perfect. and not everyone is fortunate enough to be able to lightsaber their own turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, we've actually donated $500 in honor of our lightsaber turkey to the Waterloo Region Food Bank. Oh, that's nice of them. James loves destroying vehicles. He's showing their a Civic, an Impala, and a Sunfire. So, I got him this beauty, a Buick Riviera. They're gonna cut up a car. They're gonna cut up a car. Awesome. Another car! Let's see what we can do to a car. The glass first. Oh, sure. Is it melting? It's melting. Oh! That's cool. Oh, the inside of the car is on fire from the molten glass. Yeah, let's see what happens at the door. Whoa! <laughs> that paint. Whoa, that went through. It wasn't just the paint. Wow. Oh, here we go. What am I expecting this? Yeah! Look at that. Got a hold for the outer bit of the door. Outdoor. Whoa. 
Is there gas in this car? Is it gonna give me a fuel tank? Let's do the classic Jedi cutting through the TIE Fighter roof. Except my TIE Fighter is a Buick Riviera. <laughs> yeah. the sun Look at that perfect hole. Those holes yeah, lightsaber are beautiful. Quite a bit of damage. What would you guys destroy with the lightsaber? Let us know in the comments. The lightsaber did quite a bit of damage. <laughs> that's, that man, that's, that would be so much fun. Just having a guy give you old abandoned cars to basically, you know, smash or use your lightsaber on or use whatever sort of destructive tool you with. It's a good, that's a great stress reliever right there. This was awesome. I actually think this device was maybe cooler than the ones you see in the, in the movies, just because the additional, the additional convection effects are super cool. Seeing things making it spark or melt or burst in the flame. There's all these cool things in real life that happens when dealing with something of the extreme heat like that. By the way, if you haven't seen my reaction to them making the thing, I will pin that in a comment below. It is a really cool process. I love watching these guys not only go through their process, but not only make them, but test them. This was a great recommendation. Thank you so much for it. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.